Well, hello. You know, it's me again. I was lost and then found. Was hurricaned, but back again with you. Special thanks to Pastor Goodman and Pastor Finker, who covered me while I was come sail away, uh, washed away. Uh, yeah. Uh, Bible study. Today we will start in Genesis. Um, I think we're starting in 35. 45. Yep, 45 is where we're starting. Hello, Cindy. Hello, Judy. Hello, Maggie. Hello, Jean. Steve, good to see you. You guys got the old man here again. Hit the do not disturb sign there, and we're going to be good to go. I need to... Hi, Priscilla. The Lord be with you. Um, so I'm going to need just a second to um, make a couple of shares, and then we'll be rocking and rolling. That'll give a few people time to catch up with us. I hope that you had a wonderful weekend. We had um, Pastor Finker yesterday for a hop, skip, and a jump, and then he had to go and... Um, uh, I think he has a funeral in his, uh, or a death in his congregation. So we were happy to have him for the little bit of time that we had him. Um, I think it's probably helpful to go back at just a touch. Um, and you had Goodman and those wonderful charts. Um, some of you that like those charts, that's great for you. Um, I look at a chart, I'm like this. Uh, but But Goodman is an amazing teacher and we were super duper pleased to have him in our midst a little bit of warning i'm happy to be back with you and so if it means i'm a little feisty today it means i'm a little feisty today Let's see what we got here and away we go um Joseph could not control himself before all those who stood by him. He cried, make everyone go out from me. So no one stayed with uh, him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. Hey, Susanna, it's okay. You love the charts. All good. All good. Everybody has their different things that they resonate with. Um, I see a chart. And I'm like, that's a chart. Um, but, uh, yeah, I still love you both, you and Judy. And I'm glad that you love me, too, with my old-fashioned uh, text and teach method. Hey, Anne, good to see you. And coming to us on her day off. Excellent. So, look, here's the deal with Joseph. You had it last week where the thing escalated. Um, he kept Benjamin. I'm sorry. He kept, um, I think it was Reuben. He kept Reuben and sent them home to go get Benjamin to prove that they weren't lying. Good catch, buddy. I like to call Thor Hall plan on when he, um, when, uh, uh, when I think he's lying to me, uh, he will tell me when he has to go to the bathroom and when I think he's lying to me, I'm like, I'll tell him, ho plan on, what are you doing? But um, Joseph accused them of lying. It's all part of the shtick. And, um, and it was getting serious. And they go back to Jacob and they say, tell Jacob, you know, this guy in Egypt is nuts. He thinks we're spies. And he's going to kill Reuben. He's going to keep Reuben in jail if you don't, like, send Benjamin with us. And, um... I know, I'm back from out of space. You know what I mean? Uh, but, um... The, um... And, and Jacob won't let him go. Jacob's like, I've already lost. Hi, Terry Lynn. The Lord be with you. Um, Jacob's like, I won't let him go. No way, no how. Uh-uh. Last kid from Rachel, the baby, not gonna, not gonna let that happen. 
not going to do it. Wouldn't be prudent at this juncture. And so, um, and so he, he, uh, so, but he sends them back. It was Simeon. Okay. It was Simeon. So he sends them back and, and we read this together, Steve. I'm just a forgetful guy, but, um, he sends them back for more food. And Joseph's like, Oh no, but they beg and they plead with Joseph and they tell Joseph the truth that dad won't let him go. And the dad lost a brother and that they killed that brother. They sold that brother into slavery and, and they come clean with him and it, it, it wrecks Joseph in his spirit so much over the head. Um, it wrecks Joseph in his spirit so much that he starts breaking down in their midst and he can't contain himself anymore. And he starts crying and he's like, everybody out, 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 everybody out, clear the room, clear the room. And that's what happens. Uh, Thor thinks I'm hollering at him when I get real loud. It happens during sporting events too. He is convinced that I'm hollering at him. And so he'll like run up to me and be like, are you okay? Are you doing okay? Two. And he wept aloud so that the Mitzrayim, the, the Egyptians heard him and the household of Pharaoh heard it. And so this is, um, this is, uh, this is serious. This is, um, Like, this is real. It got real for Joseph. And so now the big reveal comes. This is it. The big reveal. Five chapters at least in the making. The big reveal comes. And it was through uh, being sold into slavery, working in Potiphar's house, me too falsely, in jail with the cupbearer and the, the baker, um... Steve, I'm glad we're friends, even though you're older than me. Um, but um, the the the, the cupbearer, the being left in the prison, moving to the top of the prison, interpreting dreams. The cupbearer remembers him. Pharaoh then calls him. He gets to the top of Pharaoh's house, interpreting the dreams. And now Joseph's family's there. His brother's there. The author of all the evil in his life. And he reveals himself to him, to them finally. And this is the biggest deal. And Joseph said to his brothers, Ani Yosef, I'm Joseph. Is my father still alive? And the brothers, you can, what, what is so unbelievably real about what Moses writes is the brother brother's reaction, their subsequent reaction in everything that goes on after this is so very human. It's so very human. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. It is so very human. But his brothers could not answer him. For um, they were um, they were alarmed. This verb literally means to be put into a panic. They had a panic attack in his presence. So alarm sounds like, you know, but I mean, you get, you get the, that, that sort of, um, I don't know Spanish, but sometimes I like to watch if, if I can't sleep the Spanish soap operas, because even though I don't know Spanish, um, sometimes the, um, the overacting is so hilarious that, you know, you can guess what's going on uh, and sort of fill it in. It makes for a fun joke. And like, like they're in a panic. So even if it, they're like this, 
Um, because the guy who was dead, the guy who they wronged, is now the guy who's the crazy guy who is, um, who is, uh, uh, Is suddenly before them. They were dis. They were dis. They were up. They they were panicked. Literally at his face, they see him now for who he truly is, and they panic. Oh, hello, Newman. Verse four. So Joseph said uh, to his brothers, um, draw near to me, come near to me. And they came near and he said, I am your brother, Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And this is the part where you'd expect him to say, guards, take them away. No comment, Newman, um, about whether I missed you or not. You expect them to go, guards, take them away. They sold him into slavery. Can you imagine how they, um, can you imagine how their, um, how their, uh, how their reaction to coming near to him was? Come near. And they're like, I'm Joseph, whom you sold into slavery. I will be stunned if we get through six verses today. I'm so glad to be back with you. Man, hurricanes stink. You don't want anything to do with hurricanes. They're awful. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about that later. Um, Don't be, um, don't be, don't be grieved or worried. Don't be worried and don't be angry, which is interesting. But it's not angry. It's angry with yourselves because you sold me here. Um, this is the best verse ever. Would that we had such faith as Joseph. Um, so I, I'm so excited. I just can't hide it. I'm about to lose control and I think I like it. The, 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 just the utter gospelness of the next sentence should give you goosebumps. Don't be worried or don't be angry. Don't be worried. Don't be angry with yourselves because you sold me here. Uh, because... For the, pur for the purpose of preserving your life, God shellocked me here before you, before your phase. Remember, they, remember they, um, they were scared and caused a panic attack in his faith. And he tells him to draw closer. He says, I'm Joseph, who you sold into slavery. But, but, but don't you worry and don't you be angry with yourself for selling you into slavery because God sent me here before your face, before you got here, in order to preserve your life. 
now we have to completely lose all of our categories of good and evil. You're welcome, Jennifer. I'm so excited. I love this, and you should love it too. And the reason why you should love this is because this is a truth that no one believes except for God. Because famine has been in the land for two years. And there's yet another five years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. And God sent me before your face for you a remnant of the earth and to keep alive for many survivors. For great number of survivors. And here's the unbelievable gospel clincher. It was not you who sent me here. <laughs> but God. Hold that thought just for one second. I have told you so many times during these Bible studies, and I hope these Bible studies have been a gift for, us, gift for you, as they've been a gift for me too. I have told you so many times, and I've said it in video shorts for the last 15 years, this truth that nothing happens to you apart from your baptism that no evil befalls you apart from the son of god that he's put his name on you and he's got you and neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come will be able to separate you from the love of god in christ jesus that everything works out for your good in christ that no matter what happens to you no matter what the worst that can happen to you is death, and he's taken that from you. He's taken that on to himself, and that by his stripes you are healed. He has conquered death, so you've conquered death. He has conquered sin, so you've conquered sin. And in Revelation he says, Behold, I make all things new. And here is Joseph. They did bad things to him. They did very bad things to him. Very, 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 very bad, Jerry. Bad things to him. They did bad things to him. They mistreated him. They threw him into a well. They wanted to kill him. They left him for dead. They sold him into slavery. And bad things happened afterwards. And everything they did to him was flat out evil. And everything that befalled him in that was evil. Potiphar's wife, the cupbearer, the baker, the whole thing was one big hot mess of evil. And it all happened to Joseph. And Joseph could look at God and he could shake his, his hand at God and be like, what up with you, God? You are a bad God. You stink. What does Joseph do? We have our categories. Um, you can hear, I'm warming up here. We have our categories. We have good and we have evil. Okay? Good, evil. Okay? Good, tov, God. 
He does good. God does good. Evil is done by the devil, the world, and our sinful flesh. God, who's good, can't do evil. Only the devil can do evil. So something bad happens to us and we go, the devil did it. How many preachers, when bad things happen to you, tell you on the TV, the radio, before they ask you for money, ban that devil from you. Forgetting that God is such a good God. God is such a good God. He is such a, to be God, to be tov like God, means that when people do ra'ah, when they do evil, He's got evil so under control that he makes evil work out for good. He's running the show so much. See, this isn't Monday Night Football. God versus devil. Da, 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 da. You know, the the two helmets. No, this is not what's going on there. No, no, no. It's not what's going on there. This is not. These are not equal teams. When, when Satan works against God, when you inadvertently work against God, when other people work against God, evil. Yes, exactly. Lestico, uh, three-year series. Hey, uh, Newman, uh, because of you, I'm doing, uh, uh, and this channel, I, I'm doing, uh, uh, Tuesday is, um, Tuesday three-year lectionary day. So I'm going to know what's going on in the three-year lectionary because of um, those those studies. But Peter's a great example of it. You're the Christ, the Son of the living God. Move to the front of the class, Peter. You're a good student, but flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you, but my Father is in heaven. And you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. It's like uh, the old Cosby show before. It was bad. Um, King me! That's what Peter said. Uh, he said it was, except it was, Pope me! And he, he goes to the front of the class and he's, and he's Pope for about a chapter. I'm sorry, about three verses. And then Jesus is like, well, so this is what it means that I'm the Christ. It's necessary for me to suffer many things at the hands of the chief priests, teachers of the law, be crucified and die. But on the third day, I'll rise again from the dead. And Peter takes him aside. Look, look, dude, I don't know if you know this. I got the nice hat, got the staff. I won these things. And like, uh, first Pope, um, you can't do this. You can't do this. Never to you, Lord. And he had all the love in his heart. Get behind me, Satan, said Jesus. If not mind the things of God, but the things of men. Anything that would keep Jesus from the cross is Satan talk. You want to find Satan? Don't look for the bad in your life. Look for the places in your life that are not confessed and forgiven. You want to find Satan in your life? Don't, don't, don't look... Don't look for where the mishaps happen. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Instead, look in the places that you are hiding your sins. There you'll find him. Okay? Because let me tell you about the bad in your life. The suffering, the pain, the hurricanes. All of those bad things in your life. COVID. Um, the, uh, uh, the selection foolishness, the riots, all of that. Don't look there. When you, when you see those things, you ask yourself, what's God doing in all of this? How's God working through all of this to save me? Because he wouldn't allow this to happen unless he was trying to save me. So what is God doing in order to save me? Now, he could be repenting you. He could be calling you from your sins. He could be like knocking you down a peg so that you could be saved. But everything God does and everything he lets befall you is for your good to save you. And, and although you have your nice boxes, Tov, Ra'a, good, evil, and you've got God properly boxed in the good box, and you've got the devil properly boxed in the Ra'a box, Joseph blows those categories away. You didn't throw me into, into the well. God did. But Joseph, Joseph, you can't say that, Joseph. You cannot say that because if you say that, 
then um, then then you make God the author of evil, and that's not that's that's not going to happen. That's that's no tov, no good. You can't do that. But he did. It's right there in the Bible. The B-I-B-L-E, that's, yes, that's the book for me. I stand upon the word of God. The B-I-B-L-E, Bible, the thing we teach the kids to sing. But we don't ever read. See, the Lord busts up the categories. And he's such a good God. He's like, look, all the evil that befalls you, all the bad that happens to you, I'm going to make good. In Revelation, behold, I make all things new. Ah, uh, Pastor uh, Lestico, you're, God's going to be saying, you are not going to figure out the good I'm doing right now. You walk by faith and not by sight. That's um, Just walk by faith and not by sight that I am. Trust his promise. Learn from Joseph. They threw him in the well. They left him for dead. They sold him into slavery. And what does he say? You didn't do it. God did it. What? And he doesn't care about you're going to make God the author of evil. I wrote an article one time about how God makes all things good and how he takes the bad in your life and he makes it good and how the same thing I'm telling you which I'm a book is coming I know it's coming I just need to I need some free time and I'll, I'm going to, I'm going to turn out a book. But there's going to be a chapter on this because you need this. You need to actually read the Bible and stop letting your mind tell you what the Bible says. Because if you actually read the Bible then you will see unbelievable things like this. You did not throw me in that well. God did it. And God did it to save you and a bunch of people. Do you, do you even comprehend how crazy that is? And God doesn't speak from, from heaven with a loud voice. To heck I did. I, I didn't do that. I'm God. I would never do bad to you. Faith says that God works all things out for our good. Augustine, trying to protect God, and we do that a lot, says that God doesn't do evil, he allows evil to happen. That answer works in Bible class when you're trying to sidestep somebody who's got you cornered with something like, um, well, what about rape? What about abuse? What about divorce? What about abortion? And that, that's, the, that's, the, that's the thing that happened with the article I wrote. I wrote the article about how God was going to work good from evil. He worked good from evil in the lives of these kids. And somebody responded, you're clueless. What about abuse? What about ab abortion? What about that? And that's where Pastor Lestico's answer is. And you certainly wouldn't slap somebody who had just gotten raped on the shoulder and say, don't worry, God's going to work this out or God's behind it. What you would say is, look, I don't know. I'm sorry. This is awful. I'm sorry this happened to you. I'm so, this is terrible. I'm so very sorry that this happened to you. And then sometime down the line, as your conversation with them continues, as they start to heal, as they start to feel better, as they start to get on their feet... When they're back on their feet again. Little Michael Bolton there. Um, oh, and here is my man card as I've now lost it. Quoting Michael Bolton. But um, when they're back on their feet again, you can talk to them about the gospel. Your husband grabbed you by the throat and lifted you off the ground. But look at all the good that's come from it. You're, you, got, you escaped. You, you have a life now. You're a wonderful, you're, 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 self, you're, you're employed. You're making it on your own. 
um, you, you met a guy who actually loves you and everything is working out for good for you. Um, and now you talk to people about abuse and you help others. He was an alcoholic abuser and you escaped. And I don't know why that happened to you, but there seems to be a place that will come along later on. And you, you may not even realize it's going to happen, but you're going to, don't look for it. But when, when, when it happens, I'll tell you about it. Um, that you have a chance to help somebody in the same place that you're in. Sandra's there. Busted. Um, oh, that you, what you just shared is the bridge that will heal racial tension. I, I hope so, Terry Lynn. I, I think the only answer is Christ. I, um, and only in the faith of Jesus can you speak like Terry Lynn, can you speak like Sandra, can you speak like those who suffer terrible evils and then look at it and say, you know, and I forgive you. Like that wonderful family, the, 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 the police officer, a young lady police officer doesn't realize where she is. She thinks that there's an intruder in her home when she comes home. She's in the wrong house and she ends up shooting someone. And murdering them. And the family of the deceased goes to court and forgives her. I mean, what a powerful witness. They forgave her. And their witness is being used here as an example for others. Good God, working through that. Sometimes evil is evil and you may never get over it. Sometimes the bad that people do to us is so bad that we are just... We're a mess for a long time. You want to find the devil? You'll find the devil not in, not only in the event that happened that was bad, but in the fruit of that where you look and say, I'll never forgive you for what you've done to me. That's, that's the devil right there. That's the devil. Because God, God will own the evil in your world and say, yeah, I'm responsible for that. God doesn't need us defending him, St. Augustine. Wish you were alive to have the conversation. But God doesn't need, because God is perfectly a big God that can look at somebody and go, yeah, I did that to you. But I did it to save you. And look at the good that I did through it and through you. The hurricane's a great example. I'm tired. And although my Thursday was incredibly stressful, with the hurricane coming through, it was nice to have two days off from teaching you. I kind of got a little rest. Um, I mean, after the power came back on, but still, I mean, um, and and the more that you're challenged and the more that that raw happens to you and the more that you overcome it, <laughs> I'm wrong, wrong, the more it's overcome for you by God. The stronger your faith is, the more refined it is, so that you look at a universe that is just bad, and you tell it's going to be good. My grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in your weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly in my weaknesses so that Christ's power may be rest in me. That's 1 Corinthians, and that's St. Paul, and that's a great verse, Jacoby. I just want you to see this because it's so important. Don't 
Look, if you want to get mad at God, get mad at God. He's a big God. He can handle it. You won't be the first to get mad at God, and you will not be the last. But I promise you, he's working things out for good. And you can learn to look at your life in the way of faith, that everything's going to work out as gift. I tell you, if I've said it once to you, I've said it a thousand times, the people in HT and 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 if I'm if if the Lord allows me to serve at Emmanuel much longer, they'll start to get it too. Where something bad happens, and it only takes me a minute to say this too is gift. I don't know how many times Sandra has told me to shut up because I've looked at her and said, "This is going to be gift. It's going to work out for good." Um, Erica's worked with me just a little bit, and she started doing it too, but. Um, I don't know. I do not know, Jennifer. I do not know. Um, I don't know about the five-year-old. I, I don't know. Um, I just know that we'll leave it to God to all... And sometimes the evil is so bad that people do that it's going to take the last day. It'll take the last day for God to tell us what happened and how it was good and how he worked it out. It'll take the last day for that to happen. But... Um, But sometimes you'll see it. And once you start seeing it, which is called faith, you won't stop seeing it. So on my tombstone, I want this too as gift. You know, I, I wanted Here Lies a Grave Man. But now, um, but now I want, I want this too as gift. This too as gift. Because even my death's going to be gift. We're all beggars. This is true. Come, Lord Jesus. Joseph says to them to comfort them. And if you have problems believing this today, don't worry, the brothers did too. He tells them to comfort, to comfort them. You didn't do this. God did this. And he did it to save us. That's the way of faith. I told this in Sunday morning Bible class. If you're watching the Sunday morning Bible class, you're going to get a repetition of this, this story, but it's, it's, it's true. Um, on Thursday, after Thor and I had been here basically from five in the morning, we got dropped off at five. Um, we, um, we basically spent the day here at church because if anything happened to church, I wanted, you know, um, uh, Amy was working and mother-in-law had come here to avoid the hurricane. And so um, that seemed odd. But anyway, um, it's a joke. South Louisiana always flees to North Louisiana, and North Louisiana never gets direct hits in hurricanes, except this time. And so we're, we're like, Thor and I are hanging out here at church. Power goes off at 8, and we start, and, and the power went off, and then we heard that we, we couldn't hear the water that was dripping into my office and and when we heard it we sort of you know sort of buckets and stuff like that but um i figured if anything bad happened to church thor and i would spot it but we got home around nine ish and uh i walk in and and uh a uh, lot of despair sophia can't handle the power being out it's bad it's bad generators packed in a storage and we don't know like far, far, far. We haven't moved into a house yet. And so I started doing the thing like, it's going to be a gift. It's going to work out. You're going to see the power's going to come back on. It's going to come back on. It's going to work out. It's going to be fine. And I just decide I'm going to take a shower. Okay. Cold water, cold shower. Um, and so I'm taking the shower and I get a text from Swepco, the electric company, that um, 9-2 is when a power will be restored. Estimated time of power, 9-2, September 2nd. And um, I just send it to the family. And uh, I hear, you know, Amy get Cajun. 9-2! Do they not know what the, what, I mean, do they know that that's next week? That, 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 it's going to be 97 degrees outside. And the volume is just incredibly loud. 
I can hear it over the shower. And like the knock at the door of the shower. Done. Two. That's got to be something wrong. Something wrong. Do they know? And I'm like, uh, showering. Um, open the door. We got to talk about it. Nine, two. You got to gotta call them and tell them it's an emergency and all that jazz. And so I'm having a conversation through the door about how it's going to work out. It's going to work out. It's going to work out. All right. They probably sent that to everybody. It's going to work out. Besides, you know, not having internet for a week is going to be helpful to the kids, you know, that's like attached to them and, and we'll get by, we'll figure out how to do it. If we have to sort of, you know, if we had to find a place to stay, we'll find a place to stay. If we have to flee, we'll flee. We'll do whatever it is we need to do. And all the while I'm getting out of the shower, drying off, I'm still in the dark. Okay. And I'm, I'm still communicating through the door, but I start to hear laughter, but I I'm still in the dark and I'm, I'm communicating through the door and it's dark in the bathroom. And so I, you know, get all my stuff out and I get out the door and, um, they're all there. And, um, and they're laughing. So I step out of the bathroom and they're all laughing. And I'm like, it's going to be a gift. It's going to work out. The power will be on before you know it. And besides, it'll be, you know, the COVID thing worked out. You know, it's all going to work out for good. And uh, Amy looks back at me and goes, or it'll be a gift, idiot, if you were to realize that the power's already on. And so I was so focused on, on telling them it was going to be okay. And you don't expect, it, lights being on is not a big deal. You know what I mean? You, you see it all the time. That I walked out and was having a conversation with them thinking that it was still dark and that the only light that was coming in was through the window. And the lights were already on. And if you sort of think about it, that means that this whole thing with, with us losing the lights was only so I could pass on this story about how it's going to be okay. Faith believes, faith trusts it's going to be okay. Um, we'll tell that to the people who still don't have power. Well, hold on. Because um, I've lived in a universe where I didn't have power for a week, so... It's gonna, you're going to get there. Um, just learn from Joseph. Learn from Paul. Learn from Jesus. That God is such a good God that he works it all out for good for you. To save you. That's what he's about. That's what he's about. That's the kind of God he is. He has made me father. This is why. You didn't do this. God did it. He made me a father to Pharaoh, which is a fascinating thing. Um, um, I have fathers in the faith. Um, and um, so that tells you that Joseph became like a father to Pharaoh. Um We've gotten all through eight verses. Lord over all his house, ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, thus says your son, Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me and don't tarry. You shall dwell in the land of Goshen and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children and your flocks and your herds and all that you have. And I, I'll provide for you. Um, gosh, it, it should tear you up. It, it should just, I'll sustain you. I'll supply you. There are five more years of famine to come so that you and your household and all that you have don't come with property. Don't even, don't even bring stuff because you're going to get stuff. And you're going to get so much. Don't bring stuff. Just come here. And dad, I've, I'm, I'm here. And I've, I've come to save. I'm getting emotional because it's just. And now your eyes see. And the eyes of my brother Benjamin see. That it is my mouth that speaks to you. Can you beat this? Can you beat this? Can you beat it? Can you beat it? 
It's I'm speaking to you. You must tell my father of all my honor in Egypt and all that you have seen. Hurry and bring my father down here. And then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept. And Benjamin wept on his neck and all and kissed his all his brothers and wept upon them and all his brothers talked with him can you get over this they tried to kill him and now it's all better and it's only jesus that did it terry lens right um and the report was heard in pharaoh's house joseph's brothers have come and it pleased pharaoh and his servants When the, when the report, uh, 17. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, say to your brothers, do this, load your beasts and go back to the land of Canaan and take your father and your household and come to me and I will give you the best of the land of Egypt and you shall eat of the fat of the land. Pharaoh's on board. Everybody's happy. And you, Joseph, are commanded to say, do this, take wagons from the land of Egypt. Wagons, the word is also chariots, carts. Um, from the land of Egypt for your little ones and your wives and bring your family and come. And have no concern, no worry for your stuff. For the best of all the land of Egypt is yours. This is a great Luther quote. Do not let your possessions hinder you. Whatever you cannot sell of the famine, of this famine, leave it behind. Come over here and move. Sell all your stuff on Facebook Marketplace. Get rid of it and come here because you're going to have the best of the best of the best. And the sons of Israel did so. And Joseph gave them wagons according to the command of Pharaoh and gave them provisions for their journey. To each and all he gave a change of clothes, but to Benjamin, but to Benjamin he gave more. That's his real brother. That's his, not his half brother. That's his real brother. Uh, uh, a half brother's a real brother. That's his biological brother. 300 shekels of silver and five changes of clothes. To this father, he sent the following 10 donkeys loaded with good things of Egypt, and 10 female donkeys loaded with grain, bread, provisions for his father on the journey. And he sent his brothers away. And as they departed, he said to them, Don't fight on the way. So they went up out of Egypt and came to the land of Canaan. To their father Jacob. Gosh, I can't believe this is getting to me. I'm sorry. It was just this is the this is the center of my theology that Jesus dying changes everything, not just with your sins, but with everything. And everything in my life has taught me this. And I hope that everything in your life teaches you the same. Um, that God works good from evil. Happy from sad, bad, uh, good from bad, um, eternal life from suffering, so that you receive all from the Lord's hand as good. As Job said, shall we receive tov from the Lord and not ra'ah? Because Job gets it. Job gets it. And they said to him, so they went out of Egypt and they came to the land of Canaan to their father, Jacob. And they told him, Joseph is still alive. He's the ruler of all the land of Egypt. And his heart became numb. And he did not believe them. Uh, numb is a weak translation of that. Um, his heart became um, cold. It was stunned. He was 
it was too good to be true. Like the resurrection of Christ. They, 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 they just, he couldn't believe it. And, and the Hebrew here is outstanding. It's right here. Um, he could not, I'm going to read it and you're going to laugh. Um, ki lo ha'amen lahem. He, they, he couldn't give them the amen. J Jacob can't give them an amen. Kim, you got it right. Uh, Jacob can't give him the amen because he doesn't believe. It's too good to be true. It's too good to be true. But Luke says that the disciples didn't believe for joy. It's too good to be true. But when they told him the words of Joseph, which he had said to them, when he saw the wagons that Joseph had sent to carry him, the spirit of their father Jacob was enlivened. And Israel said, It is enough. My son Joseph is still alive. I will go and see him before I die. God's working out good for you. And he's working out good in order to save you because that's the kind of God he is in Christ Jesus. Now, before you go, I have the greatest news for you. And I want you to receive this as gift because it is amazing news. Um, when I got out of SIM, there were no good confirmation materials. And you might, um, you might sort of think that pastors at seminary have youth ministry 101, but they don't. They don't have Sunday school 101. They don't have youth ministry 101. And um, it shows. And when I got out of SIM, I grabbed the best materials I could find, but it was way over the head of my kids. And I had to spend a lot of time watering it, uh, not watering it down, but sort of supplementing the materials with other things because, again, the materials were written by pastors. Um, tomorrow, Higher Things is re releasing confirmation curriculum. Written by pastors and teachers. The pastors did the, the theology, the teachers did the lesson planning. Um, and we're releasing this for free, for now, better get it while you can, um, has created a confirmation curriculum. We have created, a, uh, Higher Things has created a confirmation curriculum to make confirmation instructable available in a, a multiple flexible formats which are adaptable to meet your church's needs. They're created to assist pastors and congregations through the entirety of the confirmation year. Lessons will release weekly and can be used in person through Zoom by families at home, or you can do it self-paced. And it's all available through MyHT, and like the gospel, it's free for now. Cannot promise you it'll always be free, so scarf it up while you can. For more information, I want you to go to higherthings.org slash confirmation class. I'm going to paste it in the channel. This, I cannot tell you, is the coolest thing ever. It's got video. It's got teaching curriculum. It's designed by teachers and written and, and, and by pastors. And so you get the best of both worlds. Pastoral, apostolic, ministry, Lutheran 101 doctrine in a way and a format that is designed by people who are actually teaching children. This is the best thing that we have done since the last great thing we did with the virtual conference. Get it? Love it. It's available through MyHT because that's the way we're moving. But so if you have a pastor who is struggling with confirmation, if you have uh, a, if you're forced to teach it, um, teach something that you, you know, like you're having to teach confirmation because 
there's like sixth, seventh, and eighth, and the pastor takes eighth grade, and you're this is the best thing. Youth leaders, this is it. Parents, this is it. A Christ-filled confirmation curriculum about the catechism. Free. Did I say it was free? I said it was free. Free for now. Free for now. That is not a... This is the best material that you ever... That's not a spoiler. That's a, that's a prediction. I mean, I'm sorry, that's not a prediction. It's a spoiler. I'm spoiling it for you. Get it tomorrow. Have a great day. We're going to see you tomorrow. We did a chapter today, even though I flew through the latter end of the chapter because the big chunk of theology was right there in the... In the and have a great day. So I got a little emotional there. Um, same bat time, same bat channel, and Deo Valentis, Lord willing, I'll be here to teach you. And I will see you tomorrow.